and welcome to Round Robin. I'm your host, Robin McCormick, and today we're going to introduce you to a new program that we're going to start in Hampton to help capture some oral histories and, and get some individual people to talk about their experiences. With me today is Lucy Talbot Cochran and Mike Cobb, both from the Hampton History Museum. Welcome. Thanks so much Good for having me. Great. Yeah. So, Lucy, you said when you came that one of the things you wanted to do was to get more stories into the pipeline and archived. Is, is that part of what this is? That's exactly right. What we've done is we've created a an event-oriented part of a larger project. On the fourth Thursday of every month, we're going to have a special presentation and we're inviting the whole community to come. The events are called Our, Our Story, Our Time. And what we're gonna be doing is actually highlighting the written word, from six to seven, really those stories that have been written down, authors that have celebrated our history. And then from seven to eight, we're going to focus on oral history. Oral history is not just about telling your story, it's also about the process of documenting it. As a museum, we wanna make sure that that rich resource is protected, and that's gonna be a big part of what we do moving forward. And the goal of these events are really to make sure people feel comfortable, bring people out and to have them tell their personal story. You know, history spans all of time. It doesn't just start in the 1600s, 1700s. It also celebrates what happened 10, 15 years ago, something that's happening to you now. We are making history now when we want to celebrate kind of this full scope and capture those stories. Uh, Mike has been involved with this throughout the museum's history with some of his lecture series. Mm -hmm. And this is kind of pulling it out and really making us focus on oral history so we can build that wonderful archive. And Mike, I, he really talks about how powerful it is, and the importance of saving some of these stories from some people um, that are with us today, they may not be Lucy, with us moving forward. Robin, the most urgent thing that we can do that simply will not wait is to reach out to our people who are part of our history. I know that when I came to Hampton back in the early 80s, many of the folks that remember Hampton way back and had stories that are just simply irreplaceable told me of their experiences. We began taping them then and actually before I came. And once these people obviously pass, as all people do, those stories go. And so it's vital that our museum, the Hampton History Museum, have an initiative that Lucy is launching in order to reach out and, and get these stories and film them and record them for, for the future because History is written often from documents and other sources, but the written word will tell you so much. The story behind the story, the color, mm -hmm. the flash, is in people's everyday tales, be it a waterman who was out uh, 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 fishing, or someone who was in World War II at the Battle of the Bulge or the invasion of Normandy. Whatever that may be, that power comes across in these oral histories, and there's nothing more vital, nothing more exciting that the museum can do, and we are now gonna pursue that. That's wonderful, but it's such a big project, so, so you breaking it down into monthly segments, how does that work? Do I you know, bring my neighbor, my grandmother out? How, how do you want that to happen? At times, we'll have themes where we'll actually pick a theme and we'll invite everyone to come and tell their story related to that theme, whether it was some pivotal moment in the America's history or Hampton's history that happened 10 years ago, 20 years ago. I mean, let's think about it. We all have a story about 9-11. That's an example where we all can tell a story that really reflects what was happening in America at that time. We will do that. Sometimes we will bring in a group of people that we know have really powerful stories. For example, I know uh, one of the most powerful things I've ever seen the museum do in my short time here is when Mike brought a group of World War II veterans mm -hmm. and they told their stories about the different battles they were in and that personal, as Mike just said, that personal story that really brings it to life more than you could ever read in a history book or even see in a movie, I think because you know it's true. And so for us, uh, we, will, we will kind of guide the city through those things. Sometimes it'll be focused, sometimes in a way it'll almost be open mic. And we're going to kind of feel our way through and we do want input from the community as we bring this new program to life. I also see the evening events on the fourth Thursday 
as really kind of that tip of that iceberg because really what will be happening behind the scenes is we will be capturing oral histories in many other ways. We've, we've done it for years through the Hunt for Hampton history. Mm -hmm. There'll be times when we're going out into the community and recording. Actually, we have plans to put a recording booth in a way. Like in, a story core sort and, of That's booth. exactly yeah. right. Mm -hmm. That will be a permanent part of our main gallery space. So that's in, in planning stages now because we feel that's actually a way for people who come to visit to kind of leave their mark with the museum and share their stories because we do think history is about who's telling the story. You know, they always say history, if you read the history of a place written 200 years ago, it's very different than what was written 100 years ago and right, then today. Right. You know, it really changes who's telling the story and when you tell the story. So we see history as constantly, in a way, evolving, particularly the per perception and perspective of what it meant. And Mike is really good about bringing exhibitions um, to the city that explore those questions. It's not so much about remembering dates and names, it's about what history meant and how mm -hmm. it affects us today. Mm -hmm. I know personally, my grandfather was in World War II yes. and the, the home videotapes we made of him telling his stories, and he didn't start talking, about, and like so many people they that generation, talk. he mm -hmm. didn't start talking about it until, I don't know, sometime after 85, maybe after 90. and and. And he had wonderful, colorful stories, in which he probably, I'm sure, edited for us. I'm sure we didn't, we didn't get the full um, battle version. But, you know, it, there's so much of that out there. But you have to pull it we out do. of people. I mean, they don't always come forward. So maybe they're sparked by something in the museum or by a lecture or, you know, I guess that's part of the idea. Robin, what is exciting and what I have found in being involved in, this, in these things is what, this is live history, like live television. It's live. You don't know what's going to happen. And when it starts, those who are telling the story will remember things they have not remembered in 50 mm -hmm. or 60 years. Wow. Lucy mentioned one of the World War II programs. We had, we had several gentlemen up front. One was at the uh, Bataan Death March. The man who sat next to him was at Pearl Harbor. The man who sat next to him had been in a concentration camp, Dachau. Oh my gosh. The gentleman next to him was in the Battle of the Bulge, and the, fellow, the last fellow had helped develop the A-bomb. The milestones of 20th century history were represented live by people of flesh and blood in front of us, and there was not a dry eye. It's really live historical drama that you can, you can, you can see, and there's nothing we, we, they can replace that. You remember it the rest of your life. And you mm. talked earlier about how people will be inspired or, and as Mike just mentioned, mm. you know, bringing them out. We will pull those stories from. We really see the museum should be a catalyst to make sure not only we protect these stories, but we save them. And we encourage people to feel comfortable telling their own stories. So really a catalyst for change and bringing the community together as well. Right, and there are so many things, you know, the segregation protests or storms. I mean, you sure. could get my 90-something-year-old neighbor to talk about the storm of, oh, I'm going to get the 33, was 1933 it? 1933 storm. I mean, that was a big one. And, and uh, she'll, she'll, whenever something threatens, you know, she'll compare it and decide if it's serious or not and if she wants to pay attention. But, you know, those are things that really shape those generations mm -hmm. of people who've lived here. Well, and now, Robin, you can tell your story of the tornado. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> I think I told that one live. <laughs> on so yes, many TV did. stations that I don't even remember. I was in shock and just sort of rambling because, you know, you, you react in the moment. Yeah. I have an image of you lashed to a lamp pole. <laughs> <laughs> I was literally, I have a pantry that goes up under my stairs and uh -huh. there are three of us in there plus the dog. And, you know, you, you jump in uh -huh. a heartbeat. And I think I had the TV remote in my hand and uh -huh. I just carried it with me and I had my phone. So I was updating the city's Facebook site oh and Twitter God. site and, you know, trying to warn people all at the same time. It was wild. You are Edward R. Murrow, <laughs> live from London during the Blitz. No, I just talk a lot, you know, and I, I'm sorry about that. I really apologize. But I should a, let you guys do more talking. No, that's an important thing. And, but that, that's a story that we want to save. So, I mean, who would imagine that would have happened here? And True. 20 years from now, they won't. And so we need to capture those stories. And this is an example of what uh, Lucy would like to do in this, in this new program, is what you, how you just reacted. 
you, you went to the past, you remembered it, you became very animated, and you told us about your experience as no one else could do. That's what we're trying to do. And you know what? And I think my example is a bad one, even though you think it's a good one. But <laughs> it is those things that you don't think of as historic. Mm -hmm. It is the conditions right. of life or right. something that you know made a difference. You don't see it in the present time. You, you only see it maybe later. Or you think, oh, my story is not right. you know, the one that people need to hear. But it adds to the full picture. So anyway, we hope everyone will start coming out. It, it'll be really a, an inspiring event, we think, moving forward every fourth Thursday okay. of the month. And it's called Our Story, Our Time. And it's been so nice that you've let us come tell our story about this That's new That's great. Event. Okay. And if you're going to have particular themes each month, I'll just remind people to either check your website, which is Hampton, you better tell me. HamptonHistoryMuseum.org. Which is a long one. Or you can sign up for our e-news service mm -hmm. at hampton.gov slash e-news, and then you will get a weekly email telling you what events are going on at the History Museum, at Air and Space, and city government, and um, lots of other places. So Come to the Hampton History Museum and hear Robin McCormick's <laughs> experiences in the great <laughs> gust of 2012. Oh, thank you, Mike. <laughs> well, and I have to tell you, our first kickoff event is August 23rd, and we'll be doing that uh, both the remember the literary part at six and then the oral history at seven. And actually, we're highlighting John Corstein's new book on um, the Yorktown Civil War siege. Uh, it's called Drums Along the Warwick. So anyway, that'll be one of our first events on August 23rd. Okay, thank you. Well, I look forward to it. And thank you, Michael, and thank you, Lucy, for coming by today. Thanks, Rob. And thank you. I hope you will um, go to one of these events and tell your own stories or maybe bring out your relatives, older relatives or neighbors, some um, people whose stories we need to capture while we still can. Thank you. Thank you.